All right, this is video two of our synchronizer server. Video one went through the overview of the components that make up the sync server and what you should be aware of. And uh, we also went through the installation process. Uh, we installed the sync server 1.5 since we we're going to actually sync two ALM uh, 12 projects, their defects. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is log in to our sync client. So I just want to show you all programs. We have the synchronizer installed and we have the synchronizer client installed. We're going to go ahead and open up the synchronizer client. And again, you can uh, install this on Windows 7 machines for uh, management you know, outside of the sync server so you don't have to log in. First time we log in, we're going to use our server name localhost because we have this client installed on the sync server. If we were logging in from a remote Windows 7 machine, we'd want to use the host name of our ALM synchronizer server. Next, the default pa uh, <clears throat> username and password is admin with a blank password. So we'll go ahead and connect right there. And now we are authenticated to our sync server. You'll notice we have no links right here. So every different link, if we ha have a one-to-one -one link uh, relation, so one ALM project to one whatever else we want to link to. We can set up multiple links, and I'll show you that process uh, in just one second. All right, uh, so as I just mentioned, uh, we're going to create a couple links, but first we may want to change our administrator password because that's default. Anybody that knows about the sync server will probably know about that. Um, so we can change the password of the currently logged in user right here by changing password. Next, we can also go over to the tools menu and go to user management. What we'll want to do here is we'll want to create a couple users for the people that are going to be administrating and managing these links. We also want to make sure, as you see here, that we have available links and visible links. If people don't have visibility to the other links people are setting up, then they may create duplicate links or they may uh, mix and contrast them. So when you create users and you're the administrator of the synchronizer server, you're going to want to make sure that you have visibility into who's owning what links and who's setting up what links. And that being said, you don't want too many people getting in here and making these. So I'm going to create a user for myself. I'm going to add my username. OK. And you can see that there's link management right there. I'm going to click the reset password. And so as it says here, um, if you reset the password, the user's password will be empty. And next time I log in, it will have me change the password. Yes. OK. So that's a little bit about user management. You see, I, we haven't created any links yet. Um, and to remind you, I'm still logged in as the admin account, which is fine. So first thing that we'll want to do is create a link right here. So we'll click this Create a Link button. And we give this link a name. This is, will be what we want to manage. Defects P1 to P2, defects project one to project two. Description is sync ALM defects. Of course, you know, as an administrator, you're gonna wanna um, give some kind of idea as to what you're linking between. And as you notice here, you have endpoint one. So endpoint one is our source project. It's our ALM project. It's always gonna be an ALM project. You can't use this server to sync to TFS project. So endpoint one will always be HP ALM. Endpoint 2, you can see Requisite Pro, ClearQuest, HP ALM, or TFS. You want to make sure you have the appropriate things installed on your TFS server um, that we went over in video 1. So we'll select HP ALM, then we'll click Next. So username and password. So this is for our ALM endpoint connection, our first endpoint. So since I'm an administrator on both of these projects, I'm going to use both of uh, my names on, uh, on them. But to keep in mind, uh, when you set this up, you um, may want to add a user in ALM site administration. That will be your synchronizer link manager. That way, if uh, something gets updated and it kind of goes a little goofy, you can check in the entity history and see what's managing it. So username one, LTADman. And this is just a ALM server I spun up right now. So there won't be a password, server URL. 
and I'll be right back as soon as this is filled in. All right, now that I've got my information input, I got my ALM server URL, the domain and project. This is for my first endpoint. We'll go ahead and check the connectivity. Oh, and it failed, so we'll take a look at the details. Failed to connect to endpoint. I'll take a look at this. All right, so if we read this error right here, it says, it's possible that the HP ALM client is not installed on the synchronizer server machine, which is right. I haven't accessed ALM on this machine yet. So what we're gonna wanna do is I'll log in and log into this project and make sure I can even access ALM because if you're unable to access ALM and read and write defects from this machine, then you're gonna have major issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll check our connectivity as soon as I'm done. All right. Well, this being a brand new fresh server, uh, that was quite the pain in the butt getting this going. Um, just to step through the processes, I uh, had to install the necessary .NET framework files. I went ahead and installed the client files by visiting the ALM URL and logging in. Uh, however, I did not uninstall or I did not disable user account control settings before doing such, so I rebooted the machine after disabling UAC and went to the tools menu, uh, reinstalled the ALM client files after running the browser as an administrator just to make sure nothing would get blocked. And I've just reset my connection information for my first endpoint. And I do want to also point out that connection between two AL, uh, ALM endpoints such as defects is only available in the ALM version of the tool. So you see my ALM username and password, my ALM server. Um, this could be done between two different ALM servers. In this case, we're gonna use the same one, domain project. When we check the connectivity, hopefully it'll pass. It looks like it did connectivity data uh, passed. So we will set the connection. Okay, connect, authenticate, and then we'll click okay. Then we'll go on to the next step. And we'll repeat this. Let me get it re-entered and I'll be right back. All right, now we have our endpoint two connection property set. Username, password, ALM server, domain and project. We'll go ahead and check the connectivity again. Okay, we can go ahead and just click next, but if you wanna see how to set the connection properties the long way again, connect, authenticate, uh, and then you, you can go ahead and do it this way as well. It'll uh, bring up your domains and projects. So, uh, and then we'll click next. All right, and endpoint entities type. So between two ALM projects, defect is the only one you can select. Um, the consultants here at BNB Technologies uh, know a few ways to uh, finagle with some of the config files and get this to allow us to synchronize requirements. Um, you can contact us if you need more information about that. Then we'll go ahead and uh, click finish here. And this link has not yet been configured. Do we want to edit the link? Yes, we do. So we've got our link name, our link description, our endpoint one, endpoint two, if we have different, uh, you know, ALM servers, we can put server one, server two, whatever we want to give the names. We have to validate our links when we're done um, with doing an integrity check, things such as our defect one field that we want to sync to defect two field, it has more characters, it'll give us a warning saying some of the data may be truncated. Uh, that sort of thing, or if you're trying to sync an integer to um, a user value field, you know, you might get some errors that way. It, it kind of just breaks down. So that's what the link state is. You have to validate it first. Connectivity. We have our connectivity information right here that we've already put in. Scheduling. How often do we want to run the synchronization task? The quickest you can run it is incrementally every 30 minutes. Oh, looks like it's letting us go down. Generally, this will, this will only let you, uh, in previous versions, it would only let you run it once a uh, every 30 minutes. Um, perhaps that'll change, but I would urge people not to hammer the, the server with jobs. 
Um, the ALM server, you know, and maybe lock people may be looking at them. You'll get some um, incremental synchronization errors that way. But then again, the full synchronization, you might want to run this every night at midnight. Um, so you choose the time every day that you want to run that at. And we have some filters here. Is there only a, a certain instance that we want to run the synchronization? Only if the defect belongs to a certain project. Uh, you know, ALM dropdown value matches this or certain things. I didn't refer to ALM project because it has to belong to that project when we set that up. So by project, I meant a certain effort that we we can select from from values and fields in ALM. Next, we'll go ahead and look at the rules. When a record is created in this endpoint, create a corresponding record in the other endpoint. When a record is created in this endpoint, create one over here. So maybe you want to have a source of record and you only want uh, defects from one side going elsewhere. Um, same thing with update and then deletions. So you'll have to pay attention to those rules. And most important is uh, the field mappings right here. So any required field that you have in ALM will have to be filled out. There is no way around that. If it's a field that's required in ALM, you're going to have to find a value. You're going to have to create a value from TFS in order to map those over. So you, you're going to have to make sure that everything you want synced, it's going to have to get synced. So of course, uh, in the particular projects that we're looking at here, there may be different requirements on either side. So if we look at the severity here, and we look at the severity over here, uh, it looks like it's both required. All right, we'll select that. So we'll click Map Selected Fields. And the direction, so we want to sync both directions. You can set the direction, and you'll have to choose the dominant side. So our project one will be our dominant side. That means that's our source of truth. If there's any synchronization issues, such as fields change in endpoint one, a different value is in our endpoint two, endpoint one will be our dominant side. So you're going to choose the direction with this drop down here. You're going to choose your dominant side with this drop down. Um, synchronization back on create. So after it's created, if you just create a brand new one, do you want it to resync back? Um, sometimes that can be handy if there's certain values that get populated in ALM. Uh, so, you know, I, I haven't validated that these projects have every field that we need, but these are considerations that you're going to have to choose. So you can see that these are both read write. Are they mapped? Uh, you have to make sure that you don't have any read only values or required values that aren't mapped. And then there's some advanced features here, so you can set some notifications if errors happen. You'll probably want to set this to the administrator. So that's a very simple uh, way that you can set that up. And then just to show you what you have to do, in order to get this link live, once you save it, it's going to say you have to run an integrity check. Yes, we'll save the new configuration. Okay, so let's look. So create failure. Failed to initialize link. Bad frequency or too frequent, less than five minutes. Okay, so it looks like we, the quickest we can go now is five minutes. Used to be 30 minutes, so that's a, that's an improvement on the sync time. Um, so, of course, you'd go back to your scheduling, and we'd create, set this, let's set it to eight minutes. See what happens when we save it this time. The link is currently unvalidated, so if you have uh, a link that doesn't have any inherent errors right off the bat, it'll run a, a validation and integrity check. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm expecting some more errors because there's required fields that we did not map. So as you see here, it'll tell you what it's checking. Um, integrity check, permissions on endpoint one, endpoint two, licensing. It failed. Um, we can go ahead and uh, we can go in and look at the logs. So here's when you right click on it, you can also run the integrity checks. You can refresh it. Enable it, disable it, um, export the link to XML file. So if you have a, a link that you don't want to get rid of, you can you can view it, uh, you can reset it. Um, I don't have the log files right off uh, the top of my head. Uh, let me see here. We'll click the view report. Uh, there it is. Now there's also log files for the server itself. Um, so it lets us know 28 checks passed successfully, three passed with warning, and seven checks failed. So that report button again is what I just clicked. So endpoint one, you know, these are fields that don't really matter. Endpoint two doesn't matter. Our errors here, the destination scheme failed. Uh, it's a recommended field, but it doesn't exist. You don't have to. If it's yellow, it's fine. It's not required. As you see here, this is a mandatory category, and we did not map it to anything, so it failed. So 
Again, here's a, a quick link to the log itself. So this is what I was referring to before. This is actual log level. You may actually run into errors down the road that you know may be due to certain binaries not being installed correctly, or somebody deleted a your your link user, or perhaps the permissions of the user that you're logged into the ALM project got changed or dropped out. So those are all things you want to be aware of. So this is the log that I was referring to, and then the uh, the report will be right here down here. So that's a very quick and dirty way that you can set up a link, and I hope this was very beneficial for you. And uh, thank you for watching a video from BNB Technologies. You can contact us at info at BNB Technologies if you have any more information or need to get in touch with us for anything else. Thank you.